video is on flagstone, also known as Pennsylvania bluestone. I like it. Nobody does it right anymore, though. Um, all right, a couple things you will need. So uh, this is the patio that's in my uh, previous video of new masonry on old concrete. That's the name of it, new masonry on old concrete. So if you're thinking about doing this and you're, you want to put it on your old concrete patio, you need to check out that video so you know how to do the bonding coat. Uh, but anyways, get the bonding coat on. And I started the patio already because, you know, I'm not going to put the edge, keep doing all the edge work on here. It's all situational. You're going to have your own edge. It's going to be its own thing. You're going to have to do a little figuring on this. But uh, what I'm going to do is give you the basics on it. You need a mallet? That's for sure. Don't use a hammer. You'll break it. Stone trowel. Margin trowel, margin trowel for the glue. You know, a ruler, a tape measure, whatever you want to use. Some slickers for the jointing. You can get all this stuff, you know, at a masonry yard or a Home Depot, whatever. Two foot level, four foot level, right? Uh, so I do the pattern in my head as I go. I also don't go get the exact pieces I need. I get the biggest, sexiest pieces they have and I cut my own beautiful pieces out of them because uh, the stocks, you know, it's been not that great over the years. So you gotta kind of make it happen. Um, the cement you're gonna use is uh, Portland cement, Portland type one and two. Mixture two parts sand, one part Portland. And uh, you want to make that, you can make it wet, dude. You know, don't make it too wet, but you want it like peanut butter or like loose peanut butter, you know. Two parts sand, one part Portland. So if you're using a bucket, two buckets of sand, one bucket of Portland, you know, uh, flagstone takes up a lot of cement. So if it's any bigger than what we're doing, you want a mixer out there. But you know, look, this is like thick peanut butter. Like, still stands up, you know, still stands up, a little bit grainy. You're also gonna make glue for the back of it. And the glue is gonna be like, pretty much, you put the powder in the bucket and spin it up with water. Now, I like to put a masonry bonding agent in there. You've seen it in my other videos. If you haven't, you should watch them because that would help me out. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, bonding agent. I'm gonna throw a scoop of sand in there just to keep it from getting rock hard. You know, a little little trowel of sand, throw it in there, but it's mostly all powder, mixed up like peanut butter, right? That's for the back of the stone. All right, little close up of the glue. Got to spin it a little bit. Yeah. All right, see how smooth that is, right? I mean, you don't have to put. Uh, uh, you could do just powder. You know, just powder. And uh, this, I mean, this is my favorite bonding agent, OctaWeld, right? But uh, you can use the Sika Flex at Home Depot or Lowe's. That's okay. It's not quite as thick and sticky. But you want it like, you know, like peanut butter. So your uh, Portland two, two to one mix is for the bed. And the glue is for the back of the stone. All right. On the sizing of these stones. What I want to point out is this is a one foot by one foot piece. This is a one foot by two foot piece. They go in six inch increments, you know, all the way up to uh, three foot by two foot or 36 by 24, whatever you want to call it. So this one foot by one foot is not 12 inches by 12 inches. You see there, it's 11 and a half reason why is to the next piece is 12 12 by 12 is your stone plus your joint right same thing with this one by two that's actually 24 i would cut that down a little bit if this was my stone it's too long that's part of what you do you know when you're um 
going through all your stones and making store making sure everything's okay uh, but this should be 23 and a half so the measurement is actually plus a half inch joint nothing smaller than one by one you don't put anything smaller than a one by one in the patio unless you want it to look like crap all right so it's looking good already ain't it so one of the rules here is okay if i gotta lay here and i gotta lay here right this is one foot one foot so i got two feet right here if i bring an 18 inch piece right here okay let's just give you an eyeball marker if i bring an 18 inch piece and it stops right there right and then I bring another 18 inch piece or a one foot piece because this is 18 inches now I bring a one foot piece and it stops right there so I have this six and six corner that's the rule six and six not allowed you do it what are you gonna put there you gotta go cut a little six inch piece right you won't be able to get your one by one in you gotta always be able to get at least a one foot length in so if you leave a six inch and six inch corner sticking out of there you have to take a piece out if you do that by accident you have to take a piece out you don't put the same size stones next to each other it looks mad stupid so i just put something together on the pile of sand in the back of my truck to show you another pattern rule no plus signs you want your patio to look like a turd that's how to do it no plus signs the other rule i like to stay no longer than four and a half feet of a one running joint right so if i that's a one foot and a two foot piece so that's three feet right if i add another foot to that it's four foot if i add another foot to that, it's five foot that's five foot's actually passable five and a half is like the dead stop rule but I like to try and keep it at four and a half or under. But if your joint starts running, you know, longer than four and a half, you got to think about breaking it, running a, running a piece straight down and breaking that joint. Yeah, okay. There you go. I got rid of this one. I took it out of the pile because you see that right there? That's called a delamination. If I put this piece down in there, that top part's just gonna it's gonna break off soon it's gonna be it's gonna take water in between the two just from saturation just from absorption uh it's gonna take take some water in there it's gonna pop that um little quarter inch section right off you know and then what do you do right stuff like this you see a delamination here this is a different ball game grab me a trowel real quick i'll show them this delamination it's just a corner right i've looked at this stuff while i was here let me have it that's all right dude i looked at this stuff while i was picking them out but you could get get your trowel in there right i use a heavier trowel when i do this so my guy gave me a little trowel but look you just pop it off get rid of it right that little crap right there you know that's part of your prep you get these pieces and you want to cut any of the pieces that you want to cut like i get bigger ones like that and i like to cut my own pieces out of them right you get your pieces cut them right and then you clean them off you got to clean them off because they come out of the quarry with cut dust all over them if you lay them with that cut dust it's coming up and then you inspect each piece you know make sure they're not too short too long too out of square if they are whatever they have whatever it is you put them in the cup pile if you can make a good piece out of it make a good piece out of it now because this patio is lifted you're going to see the edge of this so i've used tread stones right and uh you know what i might as well give you a little shot of what what exactly a tread stone is all right tread stone thicker on that front edge right it's front edge is cut it's all perfectly cut because you're going to see that edge these other stones they're all different thicknesses because i'm you know i'm making that up in my bed you know you want to spread out the mud the deal here is 
every piece has to get set twice. So now if you're using this video to do it yourself, every piece should get set twice. If you're using this video because you're shopping it around, you want to see what's going on, what, what this stuff is, and you're thinking about getting a mason to do it, if he starts doing it, and he ain't setting every piece twice, you can guarantee your patio's coming up. You might get five years out of it, but you know the problem with that is, I don't know, some people, I had this one lady, she says to me, oh, well I got 12 years out of it, and I'm like, mm, you're supposed to get a lifetime out of this, it's stone, and it costs you 20 grand, you know, so. What I'm going to do is set this, right? tap it down a little bit. I don't have to have the bottom full yet. Okay? I don't have to have it full yet. Yet. Sometimes you got to just adjust a little bit, adjust all your stuff. matched up my edge here I'm gonna pull it back up this is why you have to set it twice every piece should be set twice because you need to see the hollow spots underneath it I'm gonna fill those hollow spots in all right and then I'm gonna take my piece you want to put it back down the same way you picked it up don't twist and turn the piece that's why I'm keeping it right here keeping it right here because I'm going to lay it back down in the exact position it was in before. I'm not going to spin it. I'm not going to turn it. Nothing. I take my slurry. See how nice that spreads? It's nice and thick. This stuff is so sticky. Don't chintz on it. This ain't where you want to save a buck. You know, get it on there, get it filled up to the edges. It's a little messy, man. It's going to be all over your fingers, but don't be a little baby. Baby. Yeah, if you don't want to get messy, sit on your couch. Hire me. All right, get back in there. I'm leaning against the wall just to brace myself a little bit. Now, goes. I'm going to tamp it a little bit more. Get all that on there nice. I like to check it one more time. A lot of times I lay this on the level. I mean on the line. But on this one, I got to do level. I got to bump it on this stone. It's throwing me off a little bit. But that's your piece. All right. Now I'm going to keep going with my pattern as I go. Look. If you're filling up your stones, then stuff's going to come up to the edges. Uh, I like to take it out a little bit. You know, I don't take it all out because you got to point this stuff afterwards. All right? And I already pre-decided my next piece here, so... I got this one by 18 right here. It's going to fit perfect right here. Steal this cement. Make me a bed. Sometimes the piece is a little bit shorter, you know, so if you spank it a little bit, it stays in place. <laughs>
That one's empty. Oh. Yeah, that one's empty. Now you have to use Portland only. I don't care what anyone tells you, you can't put lime in your mix. For a flat application, if you put lime in this, flat, laying down, you know. If you put lime in this, the moisture, even in the air, let alone in the rain, it'll start bleeding up and out of the stone. It's called effervescence. And then, just if you're looking at it logically, when something's being removed from that cement, now it's a little more porous, so it's going to hold more water. If it holds more water, when it freezes, it kiss it goodbye. Man, I'm slurrying that whole back of that piece up. This ain't where you want to save a buck, trust me. Get back in there, right? I went level this way because I'm doing some stone up here, and a lot of times you can cheat a little bit if you have to. It's no big deal like if it's browning out just a little bit or whatever. It's really no big deal. Uh, I want to stay roughly pretty good on this because I'm doing a stacked stone up this wall, and uh, it, it'll just make my life easier. If I'm starting with a nice level surface, I caught my first level this way, and I'm gonna take now. This is my pitch, right? Damn, that's perfect. Unbelievable. This is my pitch. I need a little runoff down this way, you know. Even though we're under a roof, you want that water to be able to get out. that water to be able to get out Whew, right off the patio. When I put my weight on it, this is an easy way for you to uh, make sure you don't crack the piece. Sometimes they need a little abuse to get down there. And, uh, you know, if you're hitting it like that, like like you typically see me doing just with the, with the mallet, sometimes you can crack them right in half, and that's just... Setting. all right pile cement i'm finishing up here this morning ran out of time yesterday so uh i, I just want to get a nice up close you know don't worry about that we're actually going to cut into all that after i have my finished patio height and uh put a proper piece of flashing in but uh I just wanted to give you a nice close-up of how I do this. Yeah, you look at your edges. I have all this room for height, yeah, but that's gonna be my height right there. I have all this room for height. I can cut anywhere into there with the multi-tool. Yo, you wanna grab this piece and hand it to me? It's right in there. Nice. All right. Just to see what's my back looking like. All right. Need a little more cement. You got cement, bro?
almost been a low spot over here in their concrete. Was it, was it really low? Decent amount. I mean, this is a pretty thick piece. Yeah. Look at all the cement I gotta put under true, it. True, true. But, it's all over now. Get a nice coating of glue. See that peanut butter like glue? You need to get a little fall you got to just kind of keep pulling it out of these out of these joints because then it'll give it a little it'll kind of release it it's pretty thick that one isn't it you got a bucket no, here, so I, If this is an issue. It, it is, but I can handle it. Come okay. here. Grab a bucket so I can take some of this out. Good eye on that. Not an issue anymore. It is. I still gotta take some more of that out. This is a little thick. I'll put it back in if I need to. This is the, the final one, the toughest one to get out, man, the glue. Yeah. I know where to get your fingers in, really. Oh, there you go. Ah. I, I'm gonna have to mute this, bro. I can't let them hear my working noises. <laughs> it's embarrassing.
to uh, smash my fingers here like like not smash my fingers in the final minutes <sighs> all right now we'll go I guess we'll get that in there and then we'll just pull this down a little bit you know and also we can stand to go in a hair on that because <sighs> the flashing's going over that part so that went in pretty painlessly After you set the pieces, they're going to float around a little bit if it's wet, which is okay because it'll tighten up quick. Plus, if they float a little bit, you can adjust as you're going because you're going to kind of adjust your joint spacing. You're going to do that as you're going because even though the pieces are, you know, one by one or one by two or whatever, sometimes they're a little out of square or, you know, maybe a little bit shorter than the, than the bond, than the measurement's supposed to be or, or a little bit longer. So you're gonna adjust throughout your whole patio. Uh, keep in mind the stone's natural. You know you got to go for an overall level. You're not you're not on tile. Your level's gonna shake a little bit. Like get over it. There's bumps on the stones. There's there, some of them dish a little bit. You know I use it when I see a dish stone. I I put it aside so I can use cuts out of it. Uh, okay. So again, lost some footage. Uh, I just made this up in the back of my truck real quick to give you a little tutorial on how to point, right? So, that's your slicker. Uh, I usually use, they, these come in different sizes, different size on each side. I like this slicker, it's a little more rigid, right, than the one with the handle on it or whatever. Uh, and you get two sizes on one tool. So, I use this one and the one a little bit thinner than this on the other set that I have. Um, you just want to kind of pick the one that mo more, most closely fills out your joint. So I usually, I keep a couple right next to me. I got my trowel cement, right? Same cement, same thing that you've been, uh, you know, been laying with two to one mix. And, uh, I like to keep the pointing part a little bit tighter, but still tacky, still a little bit on the wet side. So it can stick to the edges real good in there. Right, and what you're gonna do is get it down on the trowel, right? And if you slick the edges down like this, it sticks to the trowel a little better. See, I lost a little bit because I didn't do the bottom. All right, I peel the front off so I can get a nice flat edge, right? And I just start working it. It takes a while, but this is the right way to do it. You know, if you see somebody come out with the pastry bag, your patio's in jeopardy. It's coming up. You need lime to make it come out of the bag. There's not supposed to be lime on your patio. Right? Also, it comes out of the bag too wet. It's already weak right there. It's just too wet. You got to make it like uh, soup to make it coming out of the bag. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you one cross section here to show you how to finish it. All right, you just keep feeding it right off. Now I'll tell you, when you're taking it off the trowel, you're not cutting it, okay? Really, you're pointing the slicker down and you're crushing it and rolling it off. And now, we're stuck to it you can you can apply this to you know anything that you're pointing vertically you're fixing your brick at home whatever you're doing right you get it all in there right and what i'm gonna do i get it like that first let me make sure you got a nice close-up i get it like that first don't worry about these crumbs on the edge right because if you try to get those off now they're gonna smear right plus you need to let this set up for you know this stone will start taking the water out of this uh out of this cement right away it's starting to do it so in no time your joint's going to be a little bit tighter 
and these are going to be less smeary all right but when you do get to that point then you take your margin trial i like to use the margin trial for this one because it's actually it's thinner than a full trial so it's like a nice cut and i just whisk it off you know get it out of there now you don't have to worry about all this stuff man um i got a cleaning video to do with this patio okay so anyways now we're here and we had let the cement tighten up a little bit you got every t-section that you have okay you need to go do this side first that butts into it okay and then you do the t the reason why is that little mark right there you'll see those marks all over your patio all over your joint work this looks more natural now i'm going to wait for this to set up a little bit and i'll come hit it again and show you all right so you let it sit for a while you know this is still a little bit loose for the sake of making the video i let it go a little tighter but you don't want it to be uh so tight it doesn't finish if you look you can see I work it with the tool and the cream is kind of coming up now I like to push it down compact it at this stage a little bit makes it much stronger and I'll let it go a little bit below that edge right then just clean it up a little bit right see nice and smooth now you got two choices here at this point you can wait for it to get really dry like maybe before you leave at the end of the day and you just hit it with a little brush a little masonry brush um, you can hit it with a little a soft bristle uh, broom anything like that it'll kind of knock some of the crumbs off you can also just clean it up after the patio cures with the power washer and the acid cleaning and uh, I have another video coming out for that like I said I'll be using this patio to uh, to show you guys that but you just sit here and you just keep pointing until it's done. It's monotonous. It's like, you know, you got to get in the zone. You got to get in the meditation. There's the pointing. All right. That's a nice shot of it all cleaned up. Comes out really nice. You know, we'll do the flashing around the edge now and go up with the stone. I'll make another video on the stone. Show you guys something really nice and really easy that looks great on your home.